Hey guys, so we're going to do a little mid poly workflow in this video. Uh, let's kind of recap low poly, high poly, mid poly. So, generally speaking, low polys are simple bevels, the smaller sides on the uh, cylindrical and curvy shapes, and then uh, mid polys end up coming a little bit closer to this, but high polys, of course, can almost become unreasonable in some manners and things like sculpts and whatnot. But what I'm referring to here is a mid poly workflow when it comes to creating an object and baking it. Okay. Now there's another mid poly workflow that people refer to where you create a relatively dense mesh, something like this model here, and then you start UV mapping it and texturing it and uh, putting decals on it and working it into a game engine that way. We're not doing that here in this one. Instead, we're going to be taking a mesh. We're going to create something about this density here. And what you do with this mesh at some point is you'll uh, break it down further so it becomes lower poly. How low you go is up to you, but um, you're also going to create the high poly from this mesh as well. This is one of the more advanced ways of doing things, and it's one of the easiest to mess up because it's, you're kind of thinking about both at the same time. And when you do that or you execute that, like when you start actually going out in both directions, it's really up to you. Like you're going to have to determine depending on your object. All right, so we're going to do a new scene here. We got that out of the way. I'm just going to do a simple plane and we're going to work on this for a little bit. We're going to be doing subdivision. Now, this isn't just for subdivision. This works with Boolean Ingon as well. Non-destructive models because you can tweak things like the bevels, right? And you can turn them into a high poly or turn them into a low poly at the same time. Uh, so those meshes kind of go in both directions as well. That's something of a mid poly workflow, but it's uh, a little bit different. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start creating some shape here. I don't know what we're creating yet, but we're going to create some. Okay. You can use triangles at this point too, because we're not we're not at the point where we can't we, like we don't need to not use triangles. So let's say something like that. Yeah, let's fill that there. Bring that in. Yeah, we got triangles going. Cool. All right. That's going to complicate things a little bit. Use vertex snapping. It's a really good tool that a lot of people won't think about, I think. So this is a low poly blocking model. Not a big deal. Uh, I'm going to leave the bottom empty just so it's a little easier to deal with and manage. But you can tweak and modify this main primary shape. And the way this ends up subdividing is going to really determine what your object's going to look like. So if I hit Control-1 and I subdivide it, you can see this is what's going on now, right? The M merge by distance, we get that going on. I don't really care for this, so let's do a subdivision. Could just use that one and change it to simple. And then we're going to do another subdivision on top of this, and that's going to smooth it out a bit. It's getting already a little bit too dense for my liking, but I wanted to hold those little areas a little bit sharper and still be able to work with this mesh. So we'll just keep going with it like this for now. Let's see what we can work out. Hit Alt Z or turn these off in edit mode. Let's see if we can make some kind of cooler shape here. All right, so yeah, we got something like that. That's kind of interesting. What if we collapse that, merge it? Up. And here, let's do an inset, hit B, so we don't go over the border there like that. This is going to be your main primary shapes. You're trying to figure out, you're trying to find the holding shape that you want. Okay, you're trying to preserve the volume with the next subdivision, not the ones we're using right now. We'll be able to figure that out here shortly in a sec. Okay. Not too bad. I don't mind that. Let's do an inset. Let's extrude. Set hold control. So we got something kind of interesting going. That. A lot of fun. Uh, just finding your shapes here, doing it this way. All right, so we got this going on. It's a level one subdivision, and then a level one subdivision again. So two subdivisions. If we apply these, 
right? We could consider this our mid poly now. Okay. You see the density is kind of getting up there. And uh, it's about where we want it. Now, this goes out in two directions, right? So one goes there, one goes over here. Don't change the pivot points because we're going to need that to take it in the substance painter. Is it? But you can't move them for now. We'll have to realign them in a sec. Uh, the game model, you're going to create a low poly, right? What you're looking for is reduction without changing silhouette or volume, right? And also not accidentally getting rid of things you might need or curvature and stuff like that, right? So you'll be able to find all kinds of little places that, well, it's kind of flat. Maybe you don't need these. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you want to reduce somewhere, but you don't want to reduce somewhere else. The low poly can use triangles and end gods. So you're always capable of like saying, like, I don't think this edge here is necessary. Dissolve it. You know what I'm saying? But you want to try to maintain the curves a little bit so that it matches. It needs to match the high poly as well at the same time. So it's a little, like I was saying, it's a little bit more advanced. But certain things you might be able to get rid of, like this area here. This one we probably get rid of. This one, probably get rid of. Just control X around, figure out what's going to work, what's not going to work. Some of them go across the whole shape, which becomes increasingly difficult to determine which ones you can get rid of. That one could probably get rid of. It takes a little bit of practice at this, I think, in order to get it just right. Those two can go. Okay. Other things that you normally wouldn't do, you can do over here. Like dissolve those if you wanted to. You're also able to use a weighted normal modifier, essentially. Use face influence, things like that. You can see this triangulates really bad now, so let's not do that there real quick. Um, instead, you could try collapsing things as well. Like maybe you just want to merge some some things together. You could do that. Uh, it just depends on the shading at the end of the day. If you're able to do that or not, it's going to be up to you. Whether it looks good enough with the shading, right? So like this one over here. Uh, I might keep both of those, actually. I kind of want to reduce it, though. So you can try reducing by merging. But it's not, it's going to start to not match the high poly. You got to be careful with some of these. You might reduce them later on, perhaps. Other things that are completely flat, you can reduce like a whole section if needed. You know what I'm saying? These ones don't seem to be needed. Get rid of those. About that one. Yeah, that seems like a good call. Let's get rid of that one. We'll get rid of um probably get rid of this one. Changes the volume a little bit, which maybe not a good thing. But it really doesn't need to exist back here at all. So maybe only back here we'll get rid of it. We'll leave the one up front. See, that ain't gone there. It just happens to work, right? All right, so we got that done. That's our low. We'll just call it low. Okay. Now the high poly. So the main thing here we should have checked before we even started doing the low was that if we subdivide this again, you can see it doesn't change volume really. Like it does a little bit, but it's not much. That's what you're looking for because you're able to model on this pretty much for however many iterations you want. Uh, but if that volume changes too much, it won't match that low over there. So these are going to be additional details you can add doing things like this. That's a pretty big dramatic step here for this piece. Just keep in mind when you're doing a high poly, it needs to line up with your low poly in the seams. There shouldn't be like a seam in this area. But if you switch to the normal mat cap up here at the top, whatever you do here, it's going to bake, right? So if it's too low res, bump up that viewport resolution. You'll see you do an inset and hold control, inset again. It's going to bake this if this is all within a UV island and projected back down. So it'll bake it out. And sometimes it'll look a little gimmicky if it's too big of a change. So keep that in mind. If it's too much, it's too much. Uh, so sometimes just doing something simple like an inset, do a loop cut in the middle of the inset, and then hitting Alt-Z, or excuse me, Alt-S, not Alt-Z. 
Uh, you could use things like this as well, which will look nice on the low poly. Uh, but this one, I feel like I want to do that, what I started with anyways, just because and you can see how much the topology here matters to this as well. It's going to make your life a lot easier if the topology is already doing kind of what you want it to do, as opposed to um, trying to recreate a bunch of new stuff. It's really simple at the end of the day, and there's a lot of stuff you can get away with. So, for example, let's turn subdivision off in edit mode. Grab this area, shift H. Kind of done these in previous videos where uh, we're going to switch to normal up here. B e and Z. You can pull that out a bit. When it subdivides, it'll have that little curve to it now. And so we can also do things like insets. Do that loop cut. Alt S again, and then boom. There we go. Now we got this kind of detail going. But you're not limited to this at all. You can actually do floaters, and uh, your floaters can get quite involved now because there's already a lot of curvature going on here. So you might do like a level one subdivision and apply it. This is going to now be another level of your high poly here. Uh, but because of that, we can now go and say select this area. Let's turn that normal map thing off. You can select like this area right here. It's separated as a new mesh. So using machine tools, use a smart face feature. Uh, but you can take this whole section, you press E, and you can extrude it a bit. I'm going to select more. You see, I selected like so. Now I hit Control I, I can select the back faces, X, and delete those faces. All right, so now we have like a little bezel kind of thing going on there. So we can subdivide this more, get it nice and smooth, subdivide that more. But this is already so high poly that if we wanted to change little effects or change little things in here, we can do that. Don't forget, you can always um, use surface slide as well with machine tools. It's usually under the modes pie. And um, now we can do things like this. Maybe maybe we just want to do, um, let's push it out a little bit. Oh, let's turn surface slide off or we can't do that. Turn surface slide off to you. Maybe we do a little outset, so press inset, press I, and then do O to outset. It's too low res to hold this area here, which is unfortunate. Uh, but because we're not attached to the rest of the mesh, we have a much easier time creating additional loop cuts now. Because it's just a floater, right? So we can do that in maybe a number of different places. We can try to get away with it. That one might flatten out, yeah. You can see it flattened out all this area right here just a tiny bit. Um, so if you ever run into that issue, there's a add-on called set flow. You can use that real quick, maybe might help you out. And then maybe only in this area we can um, slide that closer to the edge to hold it a little sharper. Uh, but we can also try other things that otherwise would not usually work well. Like um, we grab through here. And do things like insets. Make sure we grab the right faces. Turn this off in edit mode. We do an inset here, not an outset, an inset. Edge rel it. Um, it's going to create two additional edges, which could be useful. And also because this is going to be a high poly at the end of the day. And high polys tend to do better with triangles and ingons that dead end into the mesh. So you can even get away with more janky stuff like that. And it's something that seems like you shouldn't be able to do, but if you're just baking this thing, it's not really such a big deal. As long as you're getting the kind of uh, results you want out of it, it's not really, not really a big deal. You can see, like, that's a little janky. This was less, less so, but it's still not perfect, right? I don't think I would do that one personally. I just wanted to prove a point there with that. And do things like that. Okay. We're wondering, I'm just using kind of normal methods of inset and stuff. So you can experiment too. Like there's nothing that says you can't experiment. Usually you still want to follow kind of the, the normal guidance when it comes to doing uh, subdivision modeling, but you can stretch it a little bit if you want to. 
Uh, which also comes with things like this right here. This is a prime example of you could select something like that. Shift H going to sculpt mode. And so you can see now we were able to come in here and maybe we could use like cloth filter. Um, and this one might be a little bit hard to do with uh, the current resolution, but I've talked about this one before. Uh, that one's not going to work, I guess. Let's do mesh filter or cloth filter down here. Um, maybe we'll do an inflate. Oh, too much. We're not getting good results out of this right now. Oh. So let's change this from um, drag to grab. Try it this way. Okay. More like it. That's kind of what I was going for. Cool. So yeah, your high polys are not set in stone. You can do whatever you want. Old H, bring everything back. Yeah, what you can do with it. You could also try more extreme things like pressing E and then S. Maybe um, maybe we rotate this one on the normal. On this one here. Let's try using instead of. Uh, medium point active element. We can do little variations like that too. Maybe it comes out a little bit. That one's a little bit much for this, I think, right now. But you could try it if you want and see what happens. Where is that top section? Let's do that one all the way back like that. I am just going to inset this a little and then press E and extrude it in. Inset a little bit more. It'll be a lot sharper that way. This little element here, go to Shift H, drag that out with proportional edit. Alt H. Oop, did I not do anything? <laughs> it looks like I didn't do nothing, right? And pull it out far enough, maybe. Oh, wow, okay. That's not working, then. Not the way I thought it was going to. I was hoping to pull this little segment out like this. And have, like, this section flatten out. Pretty cool. Detail, but not worked that way. So let's do uh, Shift-H again. Back to global coordinates, G and X. Pull that out, Alt H. Okay, there it goes. I think it's because I was moving along the uh, the normal there. That's a big change in uh, the shape, though. So you have to be very careful with certain things like that. That is, let's see here once again. Go back to global. Global and medium point instead of active. And let's just do a little tiny detail like that. Alt H. Let's see if I can't grab the back side here. Inset, inset again, and hold control, and just push it in a bit, inset again. Yeah, so we can maybe work something like that out. Round and round we go. We can do all kinds of stuff. Let's keep building up the interest on this model. Just don't want to get too crazy with it, generally speaking. Like, that's a pretty big jump as well. Some of these won't work out. I'll leave them in just so we can see what happens, but... You have to be careful with things. Um, also, check this one out. This is a fun one. You do a selection of edges. You can bevel these, right? Like so. Mouse will up once. Throw a two point or a two segment bevel. And all S and then you can create little panels this way as well. Um, it's quite good usually because normally you can do it all over the place um, as a selection first and then have all kinds of panels left over at the end. So even if I went back here real quick, you'll see, like I could do this one all the way out here. You do it all the way along this edge. Go back this way. And so I'm, I'm mostly working with one mesh right now, by the way. You can certainly break your objects up into multiple uh, meshes. You don't have to do them all like this, right? This is just for learning purposes. You'll have multiple objects probably. So if you had like some kind of weird cover or something, it might be its own thing. You might not be doing it with everything else. 
you can see there. Now we should be able to loop cut or loop select a lot of these. Alt shift clicking. Get through. Okay, so Alt S it in. There you go. Boom. So all that out of the way. Let's see what happens. Let's export this as an FBX file. Do selected object only. Oh, before we do that, let's line them up. Let's take the uh, high poly and put it with the low poly. So select here, select here. If you don't have add-ons, use transform align objects and do it on Y in this case. And if you want to do multiples, you can do Y and like X and or C. Uh, you'll notice this one didn't come with it. Might be a good idea to grab that and parent it to this. So control P, object keep transform. So now we should be able to align one object with the other, and then that'll come for the red, basically. So if we forward slash, oh, hide the high poly or the low poly real quick. So we can grab this and grab this. Export, FBX, selected object only. We'll say this is the HP. And now we're going to do the low poly as well. All right. The low poly on the flip side has to be unwrapped, which we did not do. So let's unwrap this thing real quick. We're just gonna place seams in a number of different areas. I think here would be a good seam, but that had that little crease in it, so that might not work out too well. We'll find out in a sec. I feel like this one might work better here. Yeah, let's do that one. We'll see how this one goes. Uh, control E mark seam add on. I guess they don't no longer sell. Yeah, that made it. So maybe we'll do a seam under here. Seam in there. That should do it for this, I think. Oh, maybe a seam back across the back like that there. Maybe that wouldn't hurt either. So let's see. You unwrap everything. We'll use angle base because it's real curvy. Uh, but we do want to turn on display stretch real quick. You don't want anything stretching too much. A little bit of light blue usually isn't too bad. Uh, but sometimes you can almost get rid of that entirely by using different um, methods here. And fill, holes, fill holes on and off sometimes helps it. I'm guessing this one right here, where it's starting to tear apart. It probably really wouldn't hurt to have like a seam up here, perhaps. Might be a little noticeable though in that area. But it might work as well. There is that little drop down I did right there, so I don't. Yeah, let's not do it there. Instead, let's do. Let's do this one right here. Oh, not all the way through the middle here. Let's see how that looks. Am I cut in the wrong section. Is it the back one? Might be the back one. In that case, let's do a scene here. It's a little better. Put some margin in here. This is too noticeable for me, so I'm getting rid of it. Much. That'll be a little bit better back there, I think. Yeah, lays out much flatter now. It's much nicer. Okay, that's what we want. Let's export the low poly now. All right, let's fire up substance. You'll see how this bakes firsthand. We'll do it real quick. We're just using smooth shading. We're not doing like Boolean ingon stuff. I don't have any uh, like weighted normals or whatever. Unless I added it weighted to it, which I don't remember. But... Oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> It's not, I don't even think it's going to affect it yet because it's smooth shaded. When it's smooth shaded, the way to normal doesn't work. And so when you're doing like a mix of smooth shading and auto smooth, it doesn't work. Keep that in mind. You have to like apply the way to normal or whatever. Um, anyway, so let's do a new 1024 Unreal Engine template. We'll do the uh, LP. Okay. 
Yes, our mesh is in. Let's see how this bakes. We're going to bake mesh maps. We're going to load up that high poly. And all I'm going to do is bump these up a tiny bit. I don't need it too much. I'm going to leave it at 512 and just do a quick bake just to see if it's working. And for the most part, we can see it. Yeah, it's pretty much there. Not really too crazy on this one. Now, let's do um, even higher bake. Let's do like a 2048. We'll do 2x. See how this goes. Let's see. This gets a little bit harder when you don't have, when you have a, a solid shape. Like a, this is a um, non manifold mesh, right? So it's open ended. There's holes in the backside. When you make solid shapes, it can be a little bit more challenging because you have a lot more to do and think about, right? This is a great practice exercise, though. And so we'll see that. Our seams, for the most part, look like they're non-existent, which is nice. Something that's really hard to do usually, but smooth shading tends to do that very well. So subdivision stuff works out really well with substance banner. Still might have to do skew maps, just keep that in mind. But you could do color ID maps as well. Um, when you set up your high poly, just give it materials with colors or use vertex colors. And when you bake uh, your ID map, you can pick whether you're using material color this is for the high poly, right? Or vertex color. Okay, you can use it either one of those. I'm just gonna throw a smart material on this, something. Let's do uh, cobalt damaged. Let's see, it's a little dark. Let's try something a little brighter so you guys can see it better. Do oh steel ruined? Why not? That's a little much. <laughs> it's a little hard to see it now too. Steel bright. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. All right with some different materials. And you'll see like that seam area. It's really hard to see that discrepancy in there, but it's it might be there. Steel tank. That one. Okay, that's kind of fun too. A little dust and dirt on it and grease. Just giving you guys an idea, trying to see it under different um, materials, so that way you see it's mostly working here, including this one. This one's notoriously bad for seams. Create like it's it looks really good, but it's when there's a seam, it does not look so good, right? That's kind of one of those things. Like tank, no problems for the most part. You could probably take the base here, I imagine. Hopefully. Yeah, it's a UV projection. You can do tri planner usually. A lot of times that'll clean things like that up a little bit. Otherwise, you got to clone stamp them out. And I did a video on that, so just keep that in mind. Plastic grain. Yeah, we could. Do... Yeah, not too bad. Okay, and so now we can basically go through and just start, you know, creating new materials if we want to make them. Whatever, low roughness, high metallic, maybe no height or normal. Add a black mask to it. We're going to add a paint layer to the mask. So make sure you select mask and then add paint. Start to like color things as well. And go to town on the texturing aspect now because all you got to do is make sure it's baking like absolutely the way you want it to before you start texturing anything. Yeah, otherwise you get started and you'll start painting something and then you realize later you're like, oh shoot, <laughs> you know, that's not right. That's not what I wanted. And then next thing you know, you're stuck with it. And you'll have to start over on your paint job possibly. What you want to do. So coloring it for the heck of it. Why not? It's the end of the video. Anyways, that's really all I wanted to show you in this one. Some guys were confused about that mid-poly stuff. Um, creating a high poly is the easiest method, really. Like, you're not worried about whether the low and the high will match. You're not restricted by it. You're just able to create pretty much whatever you need, absolutely need. And you can think about how the low might work with it, but you don't have to actually make sure it's going to work with it, which is nice. And so by the time you're done with it, 
the high poly that is. All you have to do is kind of wrap it with a low poly and then go bake it. And retop of it and shrink wrap it and all that fun stuff too. Essentially. So if you're doing like power armor and stuff, this is probably one of the techniques you're going to end up using. If you're trying to do like AAA quality stuff. Because even though we only got into it um, with the modeling aspect, you can sculpt on those too using a multi-resolution sculpt. And it becomes really, really detailed if you want it to. Multi-res, just keep in mind if you are going to sculpt on it, you want to make your model as all the polygons as squared as possible. All quads and as squared as possible. No rectangles. Because they will show up quick um, when you're sculpting. If you have something like quad remesher, even better. If you can quickly convert certain things to quads and then sculpt on them a bit, that's nice. Do I need to do this necessarily? All this painting? No. Do I want to? Yes. Got lazy mouse in here as well. So, a quite useful feature that you should probably use. Not only Substance, but like Blender and other programs, if possible. It gives you're going to get better lines with it than you'll ever get by freehand in it. Usually, in this case, I messed up. But I just make my brush real small up in there. The mask, you hit X, and you can go back the other direction. Because we're painting the mask, not the material, right? See, that's a little weird there. That's the UV, probably. I keep missing the mark here because I'm trying to go too fast, I think. Usually you see the circle, like the bottom of the circle, you just run the circle where you need it, and then the rest will follow. If you ever do get into sculpting and blender as well, it's about technique and finesse. It's not really about the tools. It's it's harder to do, I would say, than like um, some of the tools in ZBrush. But if you really just spend your time on it, You'll be able to create some really good stuff, even hard surface shapes. Just remember, remesher in general, as much as I like it, like the idea of it, it's um, it's just not good enough in my opinion. As far as like density and polygon counts and the ability to smooth because of those. So, um, manual subdivision models, all quads perfectly squared or a quad remesher. You'll have heck of a better time sculpting in Blender with those because you can use, of course, the multi-res with it afterwards, right? If you're trying to do detailed stuff, don't do high frequency, though. You like all these little granular bumps and stuff in this texture? Do that here. Don't do that over there. Do it in the texture, not the, uh, the model. Unless you absolutely need certain things like cracks, you know? You might have to do them in the model. Sometimes, but if you can do it in painting program or with your material itself, do that. We'll finish this out here, and then I'm going to end the video. But yeah, this is pretty much the flow, right? It's a pretty complicated little thing because once you do it, I think a few times, and you start really getting the hang of it, you'll find that it's in some ways it's better. Um, like it's very predictable after a certain point. Like you're like you know like what's going to start working and what's not going to work. Certain shapes you won't want to do this way. Certain objects, but um, a lot of times it's just way easier to do than like trying to boolean in gun model something, hoping you get a good sculpt out of that maybe. But it doesn't ever really work out in Blender alone. Maybe in ZBrush it does. Blender alone, I know a lot of guys do sculpt that way, though. I just, I just, I haven't been able to get the quality up on that myself. I don't know. Kind of weird. 
doesn't work for me. But this will always work exactly how I expect it to. I'm probably just going to end it here because I wasn't planning on making the whole backside cylinder. But you can see, can you do it? Yep. Can you run around and paint things and create mid polys? And... Yep. Real simple after a little while. The Boolean Ingon mid poly workflow is okay. -ish. I think it working with the um, modifier is too much though. When you're doing that non destructive back and forth using the modifiers a lot, as great as it is, like when it finally works, right? <laughs> like when you finally get it going, as great as that is, the problem is. Um, Sometimes it feels like it stops working too much before you have to like start UV mapping and stuff, and then you're back to destructive modeling anyways. So I don't know. I, don't, I think it eats up more time because of that. I'd read, honestly, as much as I like the mid poly workflow, I think Blender is really you're going to be best off if you go for the uh, high poly to low poly workflow. So like, even though you could do this, especially if you spend some time practicing it, it's, um, cap you're capable of doing it, but Yeah, high poly to low poly is really, I think, the best way to go, especially if you're a beginner. It gets you in the mindset of like how to, like what what's going to be needed out of your low poly models, right? Right there, missing apparently. Those out discrepancies right here at the bottom. You can always paint in the two D view too. <laughs> Don't forget that. Sometimes it's easier. F3. Sometimes it's easier over here. Like, uh, which one is this? Which one is this? No idea. Is that the front one there? I don't think it is. I think it's the back one. Oh. Yeah, back one. All right, I guess I'll just keep going then. Yeah, a little sloppy. All right, but anyways, I hope this video helps you out a lot. It's just one of those things you got to get used to kind of working on and doing. The more you do it, the better you get. It becomes, it becomes pretty easy after a while. So if you are a beginner, don't give up. There's a lot of techniques. You're not limited to just one. Play around with them, learn, learn them, and then uh, put them to use on your objects later on. You know, you can do practice objects. Nothing wrong with that, but um, definitely learn technique. Spend time on it. Take time to learn how to UV map and experiment with. Um, Baking and what you can get away with when it comes to doing like floaters and uh, doing things like this as well. Because that's a pretty big floater, to be honest. Not, not too small. I guess I've seen, I guess I could, I've done ones that are much worse than that. But... Certainly capable of having fun with these ideas now, right? Shown a lot of stuff on my channel to get you to this point. So if you haven't watched any of my other videos, go check them out. Uh, you might find them quite useful. Now this here, actually. Whoa. No, 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 no. I did push that up, didn't I? <laughs> I thought that was this big seam error because look, it's smooth back here. But that's not how the high poly is. It's like that. So that's normal. Sometimes you'll get 
your normal maps when they bake out they might do this number it's usually because you got bad shading on it or you might have accidentally checked or unchecked um, average normals average normals will skew your your bakes too by the way so you got to be careful with that but you can create uh, skew maps in bacon substance designer would do that over there and um, bacon and substance painter in general um, your best bet the best reason to do it here in substance painter is you're just trying to get something done quick um, because you don't have any control over anything for the most part when it comes to the bake a little bit problematic like you got a little you got a little bit of control there's different little menus for some of these but substance designer is much better for baking in general and then um yeah marmoset definitely use marmoset all right so anyways um yeah that's it for this one i hope you enjoyed watching this video and i'll check you out in the next one all right take care